Okay, and <laughs> welcome back to another chapter. So now that we gathered the assets that we need, in this case it's just one for the background. And I also have a, a soundtrack here that we will be using at the end. Um, this particular soundtrack um, will not be included because the license that I have, it's only for my personal use. So it cannot be redistributed. Um, in any case, I will... Um, if you need, uh, if you want this particular soundtrack, if you like it, just let me know in a message and I will uh, let you know the link. So let's bring our first asset here, which is the background to After Effects. And let's create a new composition, which is in this case 4280 by 4280, which is quite big. Uh, so in the background, we have this and you can replace this by anything, but at the moment, let's just apply a color correction, view and saturation, so we can play around later on with some um, colorization of the of the floor, or we can just remove all the color. And but for now, let's leave it as it is. So we have our colorization effect. Uh, let's create a folder here, background. So we start by organizing the project since the beginning so we don't get too messy. Now let's create a new composition which will be our project. And uh, let's select uh, HTTV 180p 1000, uh, sorry, 180p 24 frames per second. And I'm gonna make this short. Let's make a project of, uh, I don't know, 20 seconds must be enough and press OK. So the duration will depend on what... Um, let's put this to half. Uh, and let's call this HTTP 180p. OK, just place the dash because um, to stay on top. I'm going to create a new folder here with also a dash and we'll say place holders. So this will be the organization that I tend to use on my projects to keep everything neat and tight. So anyone that grabs the project, even me, uh, one year later, two years later, doesn't matter. Uh, I can find and I will know where everything is. So now on my main composition, let's close these two. On my main composition, I'm going to bring the background. Oh, sorry bring the background composition okay which is as you can see uh, quite big but for what we want to do in this particular project that's okay um, <coughs> so now we are going to set up our scene and let me bring my video preview here as you can see the camera movement here is uh, quite soft it has this very smooth effect that it looks like someone is grabbing the camera, but um, it's not a, a very complex move that it's in here. It's actually a, a simple move. So what we want to do right now is, and of course you will have many options, but I'm gonna set up a camera, new camera, uh, 35 millimeters, okay, once per session. Yeah. Yeah, we all know that. So we need to turn on our layer to 3D, in this case, the background composition camera. And the way I work with cameras, you can you can just select your camera tool, orbit camera, and then start playing around with it. Uh, the way I like to play with cameras is not this way. Is I'm gonna create a new null object. And this null object, I'm gonna turn it to 3D. And then I'm gonna I'm going to rename this to Camera Movement and my camera I can rename to just camera because we are only going to need one camera here. And now I'm going to parent this with my camera. Just pick your whip tool and drop it on top of the camera. This means that whatever I do with this null object which will not be visible to uh, when you render the project, um, you uh, 
whatever movement you do, the camera will follow. So in this way, I, I've got much more, uh, well, at least I prefer to work this way. Uh, if you tell me that you have more control with the camera itself, I, I'm no one to, to disagree with you because um, all of us have different ways to work. But I just found this way much, much easier to work. So first let's position the camera where we want it to start on the scene. Let's go up, okay, somewhere around here. So this is where we are going to start our project. And let's bring in, and now I'm going to bring some personal pictures. Let's go to 2014. Let's bring in, I'm going to drag this to my other monitor. I'm going to bring one picture for now. And this picture, I'm going to create a new composition is way big we don't need this uh, resolution composition settings let's go to 1000 maybe press ok and right click transform and fit to comp there we go so we have our composition we will rename it placeholder 01 or photo zero one, yeah. Photo zero one. Um, now, what we want to do is keep this organized. So, in placeholders, I'm going to create folder for photos. And inside this folder, I'm going to create another one named comps and another one named pics. So, pics going here, comps going here. So we have everything neat and tight and, well, this is the way, <laughs> the way I, I tend to work. Um, so, organizing all this, uh, we can close the picture for, oh no, before we close the picture, let's do something, because if I bring my picture here on the project right now, on top of the background, and turn it 3D, it will disappear, it's normal. I need to go and get it. And I see that it's way too big for what um, we want to achieve here. Well, not too big. Probably, probably big enough. Let's just see the, the video once again. Yeah, we will decrease a little bit here. So I could I could uh, just leave the 5000 resolution by, mm. I don't recall, 3000 and something, uh, and then scale down, but we don't want to, uh, to waste rendering efforts on the CPU. So if we have a smaller, uh, as long as we don't push this above 100%, we will lose no quality loss and we will have uh, faster rendering, especially when we have just one photo, you will not notice, but if you have 100 photos or 200 photos, you will notice, uh, and we will notice a lot. <laughs> so, okay, so we set up our scene, we have a camera, and we have a first picture, but the first picture, it doesn't really look like a picture, so let's do something here inside our composition. Let's create a new solid, in this case, white, okay. And let's select our mask tool or the rectangle tool and double click on it. So we're going to create a mask. And in this mask, let's select inverse. It will disappear. Now let's open the, um, the options of mask and mask expansion. Let's go to negative value. This will give me the uh, shape of the picture. Not the shape, but the, the, those borders of the picture. So now we can leave it as it is and that's it okay so we have our picture here we have our photo and let me just see my notes here um, okay 
let's go to the lights now uh, I'm gonna right click and select new light spotlight fall off no, no, no. we can change this cast shadows okay and we will check uh, two ways of shadows later on but for now let's press ok so we have a light that is way over here and we want to bring it to our scene and this light let's um, select the light light settings let's go and uh, So let's leave this light as it is. As you can see right now, the thing is that it's really harsh on the uh, on the scene. Trying to move the the point here. As you can see, the the edges are really really hard, but uh, that's not a problem. Let's move it up. Let's do something here. Let's move this this way so we can create a a shadow to this when the photo is uh, flying around. And what we're going to do as well is we go to the light light settings and let's turn this down to about eighty just to see something and now let's create a new light and instead of spot let's use ambient and intensity let's go about uh, 20% okay let's decrease this one to 70 okay so it's not not so harsh right now so as you can see we have a difference right now which will give a more realistic look now regarding our picture to give a more realistic look we're going to do a very simple effect which is uh, perspective and drop shadow and this drop shadow what we'll do is uh, and we can leave it as it is just with five on the distance and 50 percent it will give us uh, just the feel as you can see when i turn it on and off just the feel of some uh, perspective it's not so flat so it looks like it's casting a, a little shadow it's, it, it's got some f thickness and you can play around with the direction of the light but for me this will work um, coming the light from this direction which is what's happening at the moment okay so we created our light created our scene and we have our first picture not animated but it's in place if i move my camera right now i've got something going on here okay so let's see what else we can do in this chapter lights um, yeah we're gonna leave this as it is for now um and on the next chapter we will start uh, animating the camera and animating the um, the photos and so on and so on so i'll see you in the next chapter